Hello and welcome to my human design channel. Um, today I'm very excited because today I'm going to be talking about something that I would really like to talk about and haven't had a chance to so far. And this is our connection with animals. We have a deep connection to the mammalian um, part of this world and we've always had this connection. And there's a wonderful piece of information in human design where Ra Uruhu, the founder of human design, talks about all the different other forms, all the other designs. I mean, more commonly, we think about human design being about the design of humans. And you've got your, your nine squares and, and triangles in that design, in that matrix. But other life forms have a more limited matrix, and they're all different. And within that, you can see exactly what they are, the same way you can see it in a human being. And like a human being, they are also differentiated within the species, which is very interesting. There is always uniqueness out there. So we're going to have a look at mammals today because I have a love of animals. I've always loved animals. But before I do, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Richard Beaumont. I've been in human design for 25 years and I've been spending 20 of those training professional analysts. OK, let's get into it. So the mammalian construct, what does it look like? Well, this is you can see in the in the picture here, this is what this is what it's it looks like. Now, what's interesting is that the the, the mammalians, they don't have any uh, ajna or head, so they don't have self-reflective consciousness and they don't have an ego and they don't have a solar plexus. But what they do have are three cross-special gates in their connection to us as humans. So if you think about the, the 12th gate that's hanging there in the throat in this uh, matrix, what is that? This is the, the 12th gate is the one that goes out there and makes connections with strangers. I mean, it is a part of the channel of openness, which kind of brings the, the tribe out to the strangers, or in this case, it brings the dogs to have a sniff and see who the hell you are. So animals are tuning into our emotional process. There is this link between them and us, as anyone who's kept a pet knows. It's just good to see it in the mechanics. There's a, a 57th gate in, in, all the, in all the mammals. So this is the gate that I spoke about last time, which is about the hearing in the now. And it's through hearing in the tonal way. It picks up the tones of uh, the way in which things are being said. And um, meaning in that sense is conveyed through the sound. So this alertness to the moment, this alertness to the sounds that are around is something everyone knows about animals. They can really pick up, you know, what's that? Um, but it also gives them a connection to us in terms of communication. So we've got the 12th gate, which is a, yes, it's a gate of um, social or antisocial. It's a, it's a gate of connecting with others. But it's also a, a voice of articulation. And so you've got the, the, 20, the 12th gate and the 57th gate in hearing the tone. You get the way that animals will communicate to us that they are open to hearing us in the way that we intone what we're doing and they communicate back in one way or another you know they can be looking to see what's going on picking up the tone so with the 12th gate we have this social bond between animals and in the 57th gate we have this a way of communicating to them through the tones because they will pick that up there's also a cross special gate in the 19th gate, looking to the 49. And this is the channel of uh, marriage and divorce. It is the, the beginning of the bond in, in humans, you know, to, to um, uh, love, honor and obey until death do us part. That's the marriage bond. But it's really territorial. It's like the two people come together. They have a home. They have a family. This is their territory. In animals, animals are very territorial. I mean, we know that, but they don't have the full channel. They don't have the 49. So very, you know, for certain animals anyway, they will allow humans to establish and control the territory in which they are going to live, which is very strange when you think about it. 
you know, that a dog will come into a house and make it his home or a cat or, you know, that they will take on the human environment as their territory because they know they're not going to be eaten. They know they're going to be loved and they're going to be looked after. And they have this bargain with humans, which is a pretty good bargain. You know, when you think about a dog, they get walked and they get fed and they get loved and, and they're going to protect you with their 57th gate, hearing anything that's around, you know, they'll be on guard for you. They will protect the territory for you and you look after them all the way through their life. It's amazing. If you think about the cross special gate in the 62, now the 62 we know is a gate of naming. We know it is a gate of details and um, speaking in terms of uh, facts and things like that. But what is it really doing? It is there looking to the 17. It's there to recognize the patterns in the intellectual side of humans. So Ra talks about, well, Animals demand you, that you name them. They will recognize the tonal pattern of a repeated word like their name. And you say their name and their ears prick up. You know, they recognize that pattern. It's one of the ways we can train them. It's the one of the ways we can teach them tricks. They are open to the intelligence of a human being in order to enlarge that, in order to uh, connect with us in that way. I don't... I don't use Facebook very much. Um, it's not a medium that I that I enjoy, but I have put on my Facebook book um, page some time ago, a video which I really loved. It was um, this girl and her dog doing tricks together. Um, absolutely amazing. I mean, it's almost like the, the dog, the, the human became the dog um, and the dog became the human. They were mirrors of each other. It was so beautiful to see. And when you understand the, the mechanics of the mammals, you can see how that is possible. I mean, it's wonderful. Um, when, you, when you think about all the forms, and, and uh, there, are, there are different forms, there are forms for the ana inanimate objects and the single cell, so not including those, but mammals and birds and fish and reptiles and insects and plants, they all have one thing in common. They all have a fixed spleen, and spleen is about feeling good or not. So all these life forms make us feel good. You know, you walk in nature and you see the squirrels and you, the birds are flying by. There's a feel-good factor that the other life forms bring to us. So that's something really to, to, to bear in mind and to take in and to enjoy. And another thing to think about uh, when you think about mammals is that they have a spleen or they have a, uh, an open spleen. 70% of mammals are a reflector pattern. But if they have, if you have an open spleen and you have a connection to, uh, to them, so if you have the 38th gate and you've got an animal with the 28th gate, the, the spleen is joined, you know? You're gonna both make each other feel better. But more than that, when you're out walking your dog, you know, when you bump into other people, the dog in a way is helping you to neutralize uh, the effect of the other person on you because of this fixed spleen. So there is a whole aspect of animals that can, can help heal us and protect us in different ways. And that's also something to bear in mind, as well as the other life forms. So it's such a, an important thing to, um, to take on board and to experiment with. It's so wonderful. I'm so happy to be able to describe this to you and to, to at last, an announcement, to at last be able to provide you with this information. Now, it's, it's not easily found, this information. I, I have the only film in existence, and I've made it available today. So if you want to know about all the forms, if you want to see Ra uh, speaking about the forms and what they're all about, which is a wonderful course. It's about, it's about four hours long. You can now go and watch it for yourself. So I hope you're going to enjoy that. And I'm sure you are. And uh, if you've enjoyed this video introducing it, then please like and share and subscribe. And thank you very much. I will see you again soon. Bye for now.